bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Children of Erte. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're very excited to be here. Uh, it's been a little bit of a break for us. I'm I'm doing a play in San Diego, so I hope all of you will come and see me. I'll but go it means, see it. Yes, I'll go see it. <laughs> uh, it means everyone has been very generous. We've done a little bit of pre-taping, so it's it's been a little uh, break here for us, and uh, so I hope you'll be patient with us if we have to remember a few things. Uh, Fellow D&D players will know what that is like when your <laughs> party takes a little while to uh, reschedule itself. Uh, but first, as usual, we will jump over to Adam for today's sponsors. We have incredible sponsors, starting with Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Yay. This is an awesome game where you can collect a variety. There are so many characters at this point in time. You can collect these characters. And, There's over uh, 100. Oh over God. 100 I didn't know the... how do you yes. know that it's hot. <laughs> you know what there might be reasons that will be explained in the intro insider info yes um and so you can grab a, a code for an electrum chest on the overlay i'm sure it is Ooh. bouncing around in chat as well so uh, be sure to pick that up and if you're coming from idol champions welcome thank you and uh, please stay a while and uh, check out uh, all the wonderful happenings that are going to happen <laughs> in this episode we also have a sponsor of die hard dice who and i i've been trying to keep up with this but i am really scraping the bottom of the barrel and so we had an incredible youtube user out there that uh stepped in and it, it was a huge help and so we're going to go through some abcs of Ooh, this everyone oh, and to make sure that I do, this? we are <laughs> absolutely going to do that uh someone needs help you help them uh and so uh marcus reedner if i'm saying that wrong i am so sorry but thank you so much marcus for supplying this incredible list and i'm just going to completely use it uh, for the next, uh, you know, 26 weeks or whatever wow. that's going to be. Holy and so mackerel. Die Hard Dice has supplied us with these wonderful adventure adjudicators <laughs> that we are using. I mean, that's good stuff. That is good, good stuff. That's really good stuff, Marcus. All right. Thanks. Ooh, adjudicators. <laughs> but you can get 10% off an order with the code Erte on Die Hard. And I think we are going to give away a uh, gift card or two in the chat. So be sure to pay attention to the chat for everything that's happening there. I think that is a, oh, and we do have a podcast version of this. Yes. If you are taking long car rides or however you listen to your podcast, you can check this out um, on all the places where you would expect to find podcasts and, um, <laughs> and, and you can check out and, and get caught up on everything that's happened with children of Erte to this point. And I think, that's it. So now I'm Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane, and you can find me on Twitter at that I Adam. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me across all socials at Alicia Marie Body. I'm a professional custom artist, designer, and improv performer. And today, tonight, as always, I am playing the newly a little bit stronger. <laughs> Socially awkward attorney, Feruza Armstrong. <laughs> Hi, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. I am the creator of the Accessibility in Gaming Resource Guide, which you can find in my pinned tweet. I am also an author, a performer, um, a producer. I do many things. <laughs> Just the just random things that people throw my way I, I do um, <laughs> um and i am playing Maeve morgan flynn your friendly neighborhood troublemaker 
Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find what? me on Twitter as Obol Lauren. Yeah, I know. Where when I'm not playing Idol Champions, I'm probably playing D and D on a stream, or I'm probably playing Oboe. Hopefully, all three at the same time. And tonight, I am going to be playing Neb, who might survive the day. Let's see. <laughs> sweet, 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 lovely Neb. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I am a motion capture performer by day and by night. I like to play some D&D. And today I will be playing Miss Robin Beckett, who is always there to give you advice to get you through a tough situation. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. And I'm Deborah Amwell. I am the game master of Children of Erte. Um, one thing I did think about with the podcast, it uh, absolutely highlights our Sirenscape, who also uh, you know, is featured on these episodes. So, uh, wow, you know, she, she is actually completely saving me there <laughs> because yeah. it was on the Cheers. list, but I completely overlooked it. So, yes, thank you, Sorry, Escape, of and course. thanks, Deborah. Yeah, um, but yeah, Grip Podcast is a great way to sort of really dig into that atmosphere. So, which I'm very proud of because I um, personally <laughs> mix <laughs> the Sirenscape background. So, um, however, we have Joshua Simons uh, DJing in the background, giving us everything. That we need. So, thank you, players. Thank you, everyone at home. Let's get comfortable. Get your favorite warm beverage, and we will settle in for the ninth chapter of Children of Air Day. So where we left off, we're gonna do a little recap for us because we need it as hopefully <laughs> maybe for those of you at home yeah. as well. Um, so where we left off, you had all made it through the night camping outside of quote unquote, Steve's mine. Um, <clears throat> you uh, had shared a lot of information about each other, found potentially some connections. Uh, you got into a, a vicious fight with some ice creatures, uh, but still you all managed to survive. Through the night you took watches and each of you felt yourselves getting a little bit stronger. Something about this time, this night, this rest that you had seemed to just sharpen your senses a little bit. When you woke up the next morning, you began to explore your surroundings. Uh, you could see towards the back without having gone in <laughs> the mine yet, which <laughs> is a, that uh, <laughs> threshold has yet to be breached. Um, you uh, had seen a, a, what looked like a lift, a mine shaft lift at the back of that cavern. Um, as you kind of went outside and up around, you found a very large sort of field where the snow wasn't sticking. It had sort of this sort of yellow, red sort of sand and deposits with rocks and things in it that lit, sort of slid down this hillside. You then found a long house kind of up sitting on top of the side of this uh, mountain. Upon entering it, you found a small sort of steam engine with a water tank and a, a firebox that was attached to some gears and a cable one end of which went down a shaft and you think attaches to the lift that you saw at the back of that mine. The other one, however, goes down a second shaft about an inch and a foot in diameter and just ascends into darkness. Right where we left, you had been exploring some barrels in the corner and just made the determination that they are cyanide salts which are chemicals used to break down rock and in mining for gold. Uh, you also were duct taping Feruza's uh, cell phone <laughs> to a rope that I believe your plan is to turn on the flashlight, turn on the video and yeah. drop it down and see what you can uh, record. Sound good? Sounds All right. right. Where would Definitely. you like to start? I mean, it here? might not sound good, but that was it sounds accurate. I, I gotcha. mean, there's a there's a large barrel of cyanide in the corner. I don't know how good yeah. that really is. It's interesting, though. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, are are we ready to start uh, feeding this cell phone on its duct taped cord down the shaft? Yeah. Duct taped yeah. journey. Of, duct taped uh, exploration. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, who's gonna do the honors of sort of lowering it down? Um. Okay. 
I will commence helping duct taping this thing uh-huh. to the core to bring it down. But before we lower anything, like Ruse's, you just notice that she's super, like she hesitates, like for a big <laughs> long moment. We did this right because you have two phones. Is that why? Because yeah, no. <laughs> Is this your work phone or is this your personal phone that we're sending down the shaft? I'm sending my personal phone down. I cannot send my work phone down. I have a meeting on Monday. Guys, don't ask that. Yeah. We're not getting back to that meeting for a reason. I'll have to deal with that a lot later, Silas. But forgive me, you guys. Um, I seem to have developed a little bit of a poking the bear anxiety with this place. So I understand we're going to be sending my phone down there, but are we, I guess, braced for what might come from doing this? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's like way underground. So even if there is an actual bear that you poke with the phone, <laughs> it's going to take it so long to get to us that I think we I mean, it's winter. Time. They hibernate, right? So it'll just sleep through it. Well, we this did. is true. And, oh, you meant a hypothetical close. bear. Of course. No, I mean, it, it could, could be, be a real bear. Yeah. yeah. We did. We did have that. I mean, I saw a fox visit. in there earlier. So. And the wolves. Yeah. Lest we not forget the enormous wolf. And Feroz's moose. I don't did... believe she saw a moose. Did she really <laughs> see a moose? No, no, no. I did. I saw a moose, and it was it was very big. And I mean, I, I it actually looked at me, and I felt like it knew that I was there. It was. It was. I've never experienced life, Silas. I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, when we're back there, we will look for more meese or mooses or whatever. <laughs> yeah, what I is will... the plural of moose? Moose. Mooses? Moose. 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 I think it's Why? moose and moose. That's you know confusing. what? Tonight, when we camp and you like show me the moose, fish. I'll ask the moose, and maybe the moose will tell us. But but for now. Yeah. I don't think I don't think fishing with your phone is going to bring up anything except your phone, but it doesn't hurt to be cautious. Maybe it's quite a that? narrow space for a moose or a bear <laughs> to come through. That's what I'm saying. One They'll have to run all the way around to get to us in this house. So and also skinny, through cyanide. So skinny shaft bears. We, yeah. we did see what happened when, when that small pebble hit. The cyanide, we don't. I wouldn't want anything yeah. running. Neb looks back us, over but... at the barrel and takes another step away. From it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't actually know what cyanide does really. So, um, if I do any kind of behavior that seems reckless around cyanide, somebody probably should educate or inform me of that because, um, I mean, it, it's like poison, is that right? Like it's a bioweapon it, that was bad? used in World War One. To do what? It's a like, bioweapon, like bio weapon. warfare. <laughs> warfare. Okay, but you're kind of acting like, does it go boom or something? Or is it like just eats things? Like, what, what does it do? For our purposes, if anyone starts feeling headachey or nauseous or sick or starts hallucinating and seeing weird things, we need to get as far away as possible. Because we could all end up if we're not already That's dead, dead than we are. Three days. Oh. <laughs> Silas is pretty sure you've all had cyanide poisoning from the beginning of this <laughs> whole adventure. Although that's a good Clearly question. That's is the, the answer. There's no windows in this. There's just in this there place. Are no, just the there are no windows. There are chimneys at the ceiling. There's the one door at one end and chimneys up the ceiling. I'll, I'm going to make sure that the door is propped open. Okay. I know it'll be colder in here, but. <laughs> Uh, for Ilza, you make a good point, and we'll make sure that we've got some airflow just in case. Do we need to be worried about the chimneys? Well, aren't the chimneys going to be with these two steam engines? I'm I'm not exactly sure how steam engines work, but you're burning wood to make the steam happen to turn something to cause the electricity, but that's still got to go somewhere else, so isn't that... I'm Maybe making an assumption. Over. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, as you're looking, you do see there's a firebox, right? And there's mm-hmm. wood and there's some burnt wood. And yeah, that's going to create some smoke. Um, so while the steam is being harnessed, that power is being harnessed to move the cable, uh, the smoke is going to have to go somewhere. So you're pretty sure that's the outlet for that. So yeah, I'll, I'll Are there any open. grates or anything? 
on there? I mean, on top of there. So, um, you know, because of the snow, there's like a little, um, you know, pointed roof that sort of covers over so that it would have to go up and then kind of like a teepee sort of come out around the side. So it is a covered, not a great, but a covered chimney. Okay, so we don't need to worry about things climbing down them for I the mean, most part. Not large things. <laughs> I mean, shaft me. But we had issues with small things yesterday. <laughs> so we have had issues with small things. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, the the chimney itself is probably six to eight inches in diameter. Big enough for a snack. Ah no! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a funny Robin noise. in the corner. <laughs> the only <laughs> snakes that we would have to worry about are going to be harmless, even around here. It's that we didn't get teleported to australia it's, right it's winter it's winter they're hibernating exactly so why would a snake come down a Listen, chimney yeah. all snakes are nope ropes and it, it doesn't matter if they're nice or or, or what santa Amen. snake see we did it right in ireland we just didn't santa have snake. them at all they had someone <laughs> drive them out really early on not all right. anymore Thank i've propped you. open the door Hi, Piper. Yes. i'm getting very excited here you guys i very excited to see what we're going to find. Veruza, are right. you ready? Me too. Veruza, so, yes. Okay. You Who's look at the, the duct taped remnants of your phone that have just been wrapped in rope and covered in duct tape. Veruza, you want to do this, right? Because, you know, if I hold this and like start putting it down and it falls off, then I'm going to get blamed. And so well, it's can your we just, phone. Can we yeah. tie the other end just in case whoever lets go, you don't completely lose it isn't it isn't it a, a circle no I, it's 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 just a shaft that goes straight down okay i thought it was for some reason i thought it was a like a pulley system um i mean it's it, it's the the, the cable later. is connected and goes down two separate shafts you don't know whether you don't know where they go further down okay. there you're pretty sure one side connects to that lift but this side, you're not, you don't really know what's at the bottom. Okay, of the shaft. so it's yeah. just a straight drop. It's just a straight yeah. drop. Yeah. Okay, so from what we can see, it's just, you guys, it looks just completely dark. Mm -hmm. So, so we're, here we go. Tying it off to Let's something. Okay. Prep you tie yourself. off the other How end. are going to do that? There are plenty of like pipes and things like that that you can tie it to, so that's good. All right, right. Bruiser, are you lowering? Let's go. Mm -hmm. All right, it's going down. She stands above the shaft and begins to just slowly pay out this phone as you all sort of peer over the top. I imagine, you know, the phone looking back up at you just sees the top of your heads <laughs> as it disappears <laughs> into the darkness below. Um, you know, spinning a little bit on its, uh, on its cord as the sort of little bit of wind that comes through moves it. You can see the light as it continues to kind of mm -hmm. sink lower and lower. This is long deep shaft here. Um, it bangs every once in a while up against the cable that goes down the, the side of this. The light gets okay. sort of fainter and fainter the deeper it goes. Um, and even as you're seeing it, you feel like it's banging into the sides more often, like maybe it narrows. There's not okay. quite as much room. Um, mm -hmm. Suddenly, Feruza, you feel like Either it's hit the bottom or it's stuck or something. You're, it doesn't uh -huh. want to go down any further. Okay, uh, I can I'd tell. I'd say you've it's... paid out about, let's say, forty-five, about forty-five feet of rope. Oh wow, forty-five feet of rope. We let go, so at least we know it goes that deep. Um, can I attempt just a snap? Hard, not a peruse of mm -hmm. pull, like a slight mm -hmm. pull back. <laughs> Give me a, a dexterity check, please. That would be a five. That would be a five. <laughs> As you pull, you hear a, like a suction sort of pull on it. And you, 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 you sort of feel the resistance of that. And you feel that if you pulled any harder, the okay. rope and duct tape would probably snap. OK. Um, so you're unable I to dislodge it. What do I, should I try? So I relay this to the group, first of all, but it, feel, it feels like it's either stuck or maybe there's something pulling back on it. I don't know. But it's, it's, it seems like it's, I can't dislodge it from a, 
put what from position it's in. Should I try to pull a little harder? Can you before you pull again? Can you yeah. twist the rope so that you can try to turn the phone? Not only can we get a better view, but maybe maybe it's just the angle that the phone is at is like stuck on something. Or it's just going to tickle the bear's nose. Or both. I mean, maybe Quick. there's a bear down there that you're tickling, but it can't come up the shaft. So give it a little bit of a, a, a turnaround. And we we could off. send in another phone to see what happened to that phone. <laughs> oh, see, why don't, yeah, you know what? Not mine. <laughs> why don't we work with the one with that we have down okay. there already? Perhaps. All right. Wits about me here. Uh -huh. uh, Faruza attempts to turn the rope like, like a... Uh, yeah, as, as you kind of start to try to maneuver it, you're not putting any pressure on it or anything like that. But mm -hmm. you, as you pull the rope kind of off to one side, it doesn't want to go. You're getting the feeling your phone is stuck to one side of this shaft. <sighs> All right, so uh, it looks like my phone is either lodged or stuck, you guys. It's down there. It's down about... 45, what, how much rope did we release down there? Your rope yes. is 50 foot long, I imagine. Yeah, yeah I mean, so. you were close to the end of it for about 45 feet. Oh boy. It's, you so can, it's as you peer, peer down, you can just see like that little pinprick of light, but it's weird. It's as you move it around, sometimes it flashes yeah. on and off. Like there's, there's some obscurity kind of blocking it. What could that be? Quicksand. This shaft, does it yeah. also have one of the cables running down it? Yep. Um, and this, uh, that cable is connected to one of the two steam engines. Uh, there's only one steam engine. Oh, okay. Um, it just, yeah, it comes up, it goes through the, the gear system of the steam engine and down to the, the lift. So oh, the yeah. lift is attached to whatever's at the other end of the rope, the cable that you're now examining. If I take a look at the way this cable is across, yeah. can I guess whether turning everything on, getting the steam engine working, would make the cable that Feruza put her phone down uh -huh. go up or down? Um, That's the, what we want to do. The, as far as you can tell, the, the, the lift is not very far below you. Um, mm -hmm. So wherever, you know, if, if this is the lift and the cable comes up, across, and down, her phone is probably already lower than where the lift is. So your guess is, it's probably this kind of a system. Okay. Where when the like lift it. goes down, the, cab okay. you, the cable in your shaft is going to come up. When the cable in your shaft goes up, that will raise the lift on the other side. And do I see when, when we get the steam engine running, is there a way to operate the lift from here? Or do I think we're going to have to wander back around, go inside. What you and... remember is that there is a tall uh, sort of lever on the lift itself mm. inside that cave that presumably would go forward or backward to bring you up and down. So I'll relay all of that and then say, yeah. well, so if we want to get this working and then go lower the lift, that might help dislodge your phone. It's probably stuck, like to the side of the the the, the platform, maybe or jammed in there. Yeah. But we want to get into this cave. I, I just want to verify because we think that there's a piece of the mirror in here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. So maybe we should just go through the front door. Uh, we also don't know if there's another door at this point, unless we wanted to keep going. I don't know. If, did any of you also, see if the path kept going? Also, recalled when we were attacked by ice? <laughs> this is, this is have, what I yeah. wanted to discuss really quick with the group. The ice pick monsters. Is that selective <laughs> memory we're having here? Or... I mean, I know oh, I was no, unconscious no. for a lot of that, and I'm rubbing the scar across my forehead. But no, I, I have very... Very good memories of those those creatures, yeah. And if that was what was at the mouth of the entrance, yeah, we don't know what's in further. But... I mean, probably food, treasure. There's definitely a phone now that we probably <laughs> should try to recover. Her phone is a treasure. Food, yes, it is. But food would be good too. 
Just throwing that out there. Do you want there. another one of these really nice berries? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You have any more? I've, I've I've got three more from the bunch that I made. And I'll hand over one. <laughs> Great. It's a really good oh. berry. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. So in order to, if we go in, we mm -hmm. need to operate the lift. So in order to do that, we have to get this running. Is that right? I think Why so. Yeah. That's, that's what we think. We're like, well, I don't think there are any staircases the cave in any other there. way. Oh. Yeah, yeah, staircases would be hard to uh, maneuver a mine cart. I think Robin is right. Mm -hmm. We should at least get this going. And even if we don't go into the mine today, we can go back around, make the lift go down, come back and see what happens. So we're going to start some fires in here with the dangerous substance that everybody warned me about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go scout outside for a little bit and say, and just I'm going to keep a lookout. And Silas right. starts to walk outside, and he's staying close enough where he can maybe hear what's going on. Uh huh. But he's out of the building right now. Does not want to be in the in the firebox engine cyanide house <laughs> that's a great name um, <laughs> is there wood okay. in here to feed the wood there box to, okay don't even think it <laughs> it's wood but it's very special to me and it means a lot no it, i was it, looking at oh. the, the pile right there okay yeah no i wouldn't i would thank never you. your axe no absolutely not your, your axe is special Okay, thank you. Well, unless anybody has another idea, and I'm gonna start, start going over and wood in putting fire. wood into the into the box the to get this going. Yeah, I'm just trying okay. to think if there's any other way to get that phone back up. Yeah, you don't if have you one can... of those magnetic phone cases on there, do you? A magnetic phone case? No. It, but it is a heavy, it's like a sturdy phone case because I tend to get really crazy and drop things a lot. So I put a really <laughs> sturdy case on it. You know and what? I what? once worked as a fishing instructor. So let me just give it a little tug. Okay. Of course you did. Of course you did. All you. Yeah. Uh, you might try pushing down on the rope a bit before you pull up. Fair enough. A wee bit. I'm going to stop my... Uh, moving of wood yes. into the box and I'm going to yes. come over to Robin and say, I didn't know you were a fishing instructor, but that makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm sure you've got this. I'm going to pat her on the shoulder and she's okay. going to feel like she's got some support in this. Oh, you have yep. some support now, Robin. Mm -hmm. uh, so you take the rope from Feruza. Mm -hmm. And yes, what is your plan as a fishing instructor? You're, you're just going to use some of your knowledge of like how difficult like how hard Get to pull something it. versus how to sort of <laughs> deal yes. with the tension yeah you 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 have to lead on the fish and let it know that it's safe before okay. ripping it out so oh, okay. start she gently a couple of tugs caught something down there that's so great a, a couple of tugs as you do the couple of tugs you can sense and actually give me an advantaged perception check and you can add a d4 to that. And you can add a d4. Uh, so that'll be a 16. There's some give, right? It it it's it's almost like there's it's on like springs. You're able to pull it away and then and it just kind of gets, you know, tugged back as soon as uh, as soon as you can. There's this weird sort of give. It's like a spring that yeah. keeps tugging it back to the side. Hmm. Of the shaft. Perhaps it's stuck in some mud or quick or something. Quick well, it's, it's been a while since anyone is here. It could be cobwebs. Oh, that's a horrific <laughs> thought. I, I despise spiders. spiders. Oh, yeah, spiders are awesome. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of, of those, but I think that's a good thought if there's some spider webs down there uh -huh. it'd have to be really strong spider webs though they would. okay you know what it's true i don't think i want to think about really strong spider webs because what could possibly build a really strong spider web a really I'm... strong spider yeah yeah i mean we had big strong wolves why not big strong spiders mm -hmm. 
I literally descended into hell. I'll okay. be ready to talk to them if that's the case. I've never <laughs> talked to a spider. I've never talked to most animals, but I think I'm going to be talking to a do, lot of them while I'm here. Do you think the language is the same? Like, I mean, you speak wolf, but does is spider like, you know, is it like the romance languages where the root is kind of similar or? I don't know. When I was talking to the wolf, I think I was, did you hear me like barking or did I just? <laughs> I didn't hear any. Oh my gosh. You know what? <laughs> You know, that's actually an interesting thing to think about. Like, Neb was able to speak to that wolf, right, you guys? Can she talk to any animal, though? Or is it just those wolves? That would be an interesting thing to... Maybe we can visit my moose. And see Absolutely, can... yeah. Are <laughs> there... <laughs> yes. Are there no. any cobwebs in here? No, you don't see any cobwebs up there. Do I see any, any insects or arachnids in here? Give me a perception. Any? that or even investigation hey listen everyone i would rappel down the cable but you know a foot and a half i can't fit uh, in the, <laughs> you know, so. yeah 18 inches not much mm. oh oh that's a 22 a 22 um yeah. you see no life at all in here um not a rat not a it's not a spider not a snake <laughs> not a not an arctic snake um uh <laughs> snow snakes not a snow they're snake. everywhere i mean snow snakes is also going on the list of future oh, no. fantastic monsters uh, thanks but, uh, thanks babe <laughs> you're welcome they have ice you snow snow just, just putting snow it snakes. out there I can't no, wait to talk uh, to a snow snake. That should no be No graboids, no nothing. Um, you don't even see like little fox prints or anything. This is a pretty pristine, you know, there's only the one door. Okay. Um, yeah. There's no food, so they have no reason to like be here. Well, they also said. probably all died from the sign up. Mm -hmm. That's very good to know. We um, close... let's, let's wrap this up somehow. Um, <laughs> because I don't know if we should be standing in the same room with this for an extended period of time. No, that makes so sense. So Robin, as, as you're continuing to sort of play with this thing and, and you feel like, you know, as you're kind of pulling at it now, you feel like you might be getting maybe a little more give the more you sort of play with it. Um, almost like taffy, you mm -hmm. know, like it kind of, you can pull it and then it gets zinged back and then you pull it, it can the go a little band. bit further and it gets zinged back. It feels like tar or something. It just... Does it Gum. It's, Does I it seem feel. to be um, the sort of thing where it's uh, proportional to the amount of force you're using? I suppose. That's more just like it's slowly giving way. Slowly, yeah. the more I play Well, with. you might want to try pulling in shorter bursts then, perhaps. All right, I'll give it a go. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to uh, give you some advice on the best ways to sort of weave the rope between your fingers and such. Mm -hmm. okay. There you go. Okay. Um, give me a dexterity check. <laughs> with okay, a, so like... a d6, I think. Oh. Is that a d6? And mine would be adding dex to that. Is that... Oh, are you helping? Help? You're helping. I'm trying to help. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Um, so yes. Uh, so we'll just add, uh, what is your dexterity modifier? Plus three. Plus three. So we'll add a plus three to your dex check. Check. Come on, check. Ooh, so that is a 21. Very nice. nice. Ooh. So as it is, and you do, you sort of thread your fingers through it as, as Maeve is suggesting and, and almost kind of turn your hands, wrapping it around so that there's tension pulling it up, but not really force. As you do, you can feel this sort of kind of as it has to pull, and suddenly it does feel free. Oh! Start pulling it up. You pull it up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fast, slow. Uh, I'm being careful because I know it'll bounce against the walls okay. and the cables. As you begin to pull it up, hand over hand, looking at that rope, suddenly the rope is a little, it's all cold, but now it feels sort of wet, uh -huh. a little oily, perhaps. And as you pull it up now, you can just see below this sort of black ichor that's sort of you know, attached itself to the sort of threads of this rope. I'm gonna give You're it a still quick got another sniff. ten feet. Sniff. It does not smell good. Okay, but it doesn't smell recognizable either. Uh, give me a perception check. Perception minus two, and that is a twelve. It 
smells like the closest thing you can come to is like an attic that hasn't been aired out for okay. months. Kind of, kind of moldy, yeah. Okay. Moldy, musty, musty, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, right now you're sort of holding it. There's maybe a foot of clean rope before this this icker swamp. sort of starts. Uh, yeah, it's like a swampy uh, flowers that have been left in a vase for too oh. long. Oh. You know? um, uh, Ro- Robin, you, you now cannot see the light. There is no the flashlight that was on that camera. It, you don't uh. see it any longer. Uh, Robin kind of reaches into her bag. She pulls out like a handkerchief. Yeah. And she kind of just uses the handkerchief to kind of cover it, the rope, as she pulls it up. Wait, what, All right. what, what happened to my rope? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will wash off. So using your handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs, um, give me... Nah, I think I'm just going to have to do it. Um... The first couple of times your hands touch it, it's fine. You see this tar trying to, you know, this this icker trying to get your handkerchiefs off of it. It's like real sticky, like syrup. And as you kind of pull them off and, and pull them away, now it's like sticking into your hands. Um, and as you continue to pull, ouch! Um, hands that potentially, did you ever get burned from the, the door? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, your hands Nap. just start to kind of heat up and itch a oh, little no. bit. Uh, oh. and you take about three acid damage oh. as it sort of begins to come through, you know, the, the, uh, the handkerchiefs, uh, onto your hands and begin to shake. You, 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 you let go of the rope where that <clears throat> is able to just grab the, the clean portion so that okay. it doesn't fall. But yeah, your hands are, are itchy and stinging and hot as you feel the acid just sort of start to eat away at the top layer of your skin. Yeah, yeah, I, hey, every, everyone, everyone, wait a second. And Silas is just gonna go down to like a clean part of the rope mm-hmm. and he's already mm-hmm. out the door and he's just gonna start kind of pulling gently like uh, that way with the yeah. clean and-, and <laughs> With the like, clean bit and that looks- Good idea, good idea. All right. Robin is gonna let go and she's gonna run out into the snow and kind of just brush your hands in the snow. Yeah. Uh, oh. You're able to get most of it off, but you can see that your handkerchiefs are just, you know, curling up almost like burnt paper oh. as this sort of icker almost sort of eats or absorbs your handkerchiefs oh. uh, until all that's left is sort of a, a, a splotch of black spit on the snow. Oh my God. So what is that? Is that like cyanide? <laughs> Well, it's usually yellow. I don't know. That's weird. Well, um, while he's continuing to pull up yeah. the phone, I'm going to take another look around. Is there like a, a can of oil or grease or something that they would have used in the gears that this could have been a a byproduct that's now been sitting for decades? Um, yeah, you. there was like a little supply shelf in the corner um, that just had, you know, jars and things like that. As you go over and look, you do see like... Uh, oil, jars of sort of oil. This doesn't look quite the same. This looks much more viscous, much more Greasy. like, like well, more like tar or taffy. Oh. Um, it doesn't have that sort of runny quality to it. Um, like mm-hmm. this is mucusy, has sort of a, okay. a cling together quality. So as Silas backs out of the house and is, is pulling, you know, by the clean part of the rope, as you yeah. see the rope sort of go on, you know, sort of hit the side of the shaft, you can see it already starting to eat away just a little bit at the edge of the, the shaft sides as you pull it. Finally, Veruza's phone sort of pops up, dangling along the side. The whole two thirds of one side of it is covered in this black ichus that's just sort of mucusy surrounded it's eaten up the flashlight um you can see that the bottom third where the like home button is there's Mm -hmm. just a little bit of screen that has sort of been uneaten but the side that has is even smoking a little bit as this thing sort of eats away at corrosive Silas, just pull it straight out into the snow. We, we yeah. can try to, yeah. yeah. Oh, what, okay. it set on fire? I read about that a few years back. 
<laughs> Just don't let it explode. I don't know if it's one of those phones. Something with bad batteries or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so can uh, we just like follow it? It, out it to seems the snow? we shouldn't touch this. No. I guess. Yeah. We wouldn't lick this. <laughs> it's not oh something God. for a taste. Once Silas As gets it out of the snow, yeah, go ahead. He, he just uh, he's going to walk the length of the rope and see uh -huh. where this stuff begins and ends. About how much of the rope is covered? It looks like about ten feet of the rope got okay. covered with this stuff. Um, the phone itself, as I said, is about two thirds of it covered. The stuff that's on the phone even appears to just kind of bubble just a little as it's again eating into the phone. It just kind of the gases coming off of that bubble along the surface. Well, I um, guess we're not getting the footage from that. Um, well, there's no so the, the phone is it's gone and dead, right? There's no way. To I mean, turn, you have not. To turn it on. I mean. I, I, I'll say, I mean, well, I'll give you this. As it lands there, you can see in that little corner that the, it is still eating through the glass and this enormous case that you have on the phone. Yes. Marissa. You said Quick. you had a big case yes. on it. It's one of those big cases, strong. So that like... little corner, I'll offer where the home button is, as Silas drops it out into the snow, you can still just see it's not recording anymore because the camera uh. is dead. But you can see that it's still a lit in that corner. A little bit. Maybe I'll we can get like a stick or something and, and like poke it and try to turn it on oh, no, and see if like they record anything. Right? So like you have to touch it with like a finger. <laughs> oh, just oh. do it quickly. We gonna, might be able to find the footage. I'm going to reach into the, the bag that I have because I have a, some extra clothing. Yes. I'm going to grab a sock. Yes. I, don't, I don't want to risk the only pair of gloves that I have, but I yes. have a few pairs of socks. Oh. And I'm going to stick the sock on my hand, and I'm going to try to wipe the screen as clean as possible so that I could press the home button without getting All right. acid. As you sort of hold it down and swipe your hand across, um, you're able to, to clear off some of the screen. You can see the, the glass is beginning to go, um, but you can remove some of this, this substance off of it, and it looks like it's no longer eating that area. However, the sock, you immediately oh. start to feel a little bit hot, a little yeah. bit itchy. And I'm going to do okay. the thing that you do in science class when you're going to take off a glove, and I'll yes. do it from the bottom, and then yes. just peel it inside out, you and then peel just it let it... Out. The sock is gone. It, okay. It's a good sock. The sock. It's, it's, it's done its that. job. You will take two acid damage as you sort of pull it off and it just peels off just the little tips of your fingers, the fingertip skin here as you pull the sock off and throw it into the snow. And you just see again, this stuff almost like it's living starts to sort of, you know, absorb and run around like ink sort of taking in and, and Pretty soon there is no sock and just this kind of bubbling glob of goo. Neb gives her hand a little bit of a shake, but she yep. only winces a little bit because her hands are all burnt. Her hands are all the mangled up from before. Yeah, yeah, so she's got some pretty thick calluses on there now. She's like, oh, well, it was a good sock. Then I'll walk <laughs> over and press the button to try all to right. see if we can get the, the footage back before this phone dies. Yeah. You go over towards it, you can see it's flickering a little bit, you know, kind of trying to adjust and, and make itself work. Um, you're able to go to right where the button, literally in that little corner where you can see the last thing that it recorded. You press that little button so it pops up the most recent video that was taken. You see the edges of your faces as the phone sinks down <laughs> into the shaft and begins to spin away, looking down, the light still casting. As it goes down further the shaft, you can see the cables next to it as it does. Um, woo. Uh, <laughs> it's very loud down very there. Loud it's down terrifying. There. Um, <laughs> sorry. You loud street. It, after short, it takes a long, feels like forever, as you sort of stare at it, hoping it will get down far enough before the, sh the phone shuts off as it begins to flicker. You can now see as it turns towards the edge of the wall, more of this black goo that is sort of hugging the walls of this shaft. It's pushing, the, the, the phone begins to now slide along the edge of the cables. And as it twists, you can see the cables are still undisturbed, but 
this goo gets closer and closer and closer in. So there's sort of this thin channel that the cables are just passing. However, the phone gets right. lodged, stuck between the cable and the goo on the edge. It gets sucked in. You keep watching for a little while longer. You can just see the beginning pulls that Feruza is making, and then the phone goes dead. Anyone have any idea what we just watched? So this is like sentient tar quicksand? Do we think that's a creature? And not just... No, like quicksand's not a creature, I don't guess. And so, I mean, it's basically like tar that just sucks things in. Ice is not a creature either, and yet... So is everything here alive? Like, are we looking at... Is the wood alive? Is the... We don't even know if we're alive. I'm just gonna... Well, these are big existential questions. <laughs> <laughs> Considering at the moment, I'm glad that I'm conscious. I'm just... I'm gonna assume I'm alive. But that... Uh, I don't know if we want to turn on the lift, because won't... If it's... Do you think it'll attach itself to the cord and Can ride I... it on up? Can I pull out a match and yeah. try and light a little bit of that <laughs> of the funny. remaining goo on of fire? the remaining Burn stuff to see? Sure. Because, who knows? Maybe it's is there a, is there a safe contained place where I am not near any cyanide We're and I'm not going to well snow outside? Up you know, outside mm-hmm. you'd be away from the the cyanide. And snow. Uh, you know, the cyanide field and the cyanide barrels. Surrounded by snow. Yeah, maybe. surrounded by snow. Um, and there's, you know, the, the, the blobs that are attached to uh, Neb's sock are kind of, you know, it, it, they're sock-sized now. And as you even go over and see, there's like, a, again, this little bubble, this little pulse. So it's not dissipating? It's not Is it dissipating. breathing? We don't, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it's regular. Okay. I think the tar is more alive than we are. It's kind of bubbling can I, and can undulating. Can I take a stick? Yeah. At, at enough of a distance yeah. that I'm not, I'm just sort of. Yeah. Put it close, see if, of, it, if it responds before it I close? light it on fire. Are you poking it or just near it? No, just near it just to near see it? if it reacts. See if anything kind of happens. Way. You kind of get near it. It doesn't seem to sort of sense Nothing. anything or respond to the stick being near it. Now poke it. All right. All right. Give it a, a small poke. Give it a little poke. As you poke it, you can almost like a, a marshmallow that's fallen into the fire. It, yeah. As you pull your stick up, it seems to sort of wrap itself around the stick. Um, as you look at the end of this thing, and you can see it's, it's the edges of it are a little transparent. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. You know, like it, it's sort of as, as though like a thin layer of it, you wouldn't be able to see, but as it gets, you know, deeper in, it gets darker. And you kind of you know, taking a look at it in the sun, and it does appear to kind of be just oozing its way down the stick. Let it go, let it go. I'm gonna drop the stick. You drop the stick. Into the snow. It Trying to set it on fire. Continues <laughs> to almost That's sort the of next step. wrap itself like a like sap dripping down a branch. Wait, wait, be- this wait. Stick. Before, we, before we set it on fire, I just, I kind of want to watch from a distance. I want to see, does it travel all the way down? Does it coat the entire stick? Do I see any sign that this is more than just the <laughs> flow of a tar-like substance? Do I see like pseudopods or do I see any any intelligence whatsoever? The five of you sort of stand yeah. back, circling around the stick with Neb the might be slightly tar closer. on the end. She's, Neb she's, takes a little step she is. curious. <laughs> leaning over the stick to watch it i'm not um, over it but i'm i'm definitely yeah. closer than the others like mm-hmm. it give me a quick perception we'll just see how much you see out of this i'd love video. you to roll that you'd love me to roll that i would yeah. love to roll that what is your modifier uh for perception it is a plus five it moves so slowly you're pretty sure it's gravity there's not it's not like on a steep incline or anything so and it's like it's it's like sap it's like you know it's just this real slow it doesn't seem to have like a you know speed up speed up down but it it is sort of this like 
bubble pulse that does seem to kind of make it expand a little bit. Uh, and that kind of seems to push it along, almost like an amoeba, you know, cells yeah. splitting. Wait. Um, <gasps> so you don't see intelligence yeah, so much. Sort of like a sea cucumber or something. Nature. Yeah. I, have I have an, an idea. idea. What? <laughs> you have an idea? I have an idea. I have an idea. What if they're the same it's... thing? Oh. Both of you say it on three. Okay. Ready? Okay. Ready? One, we two, two. No, you three. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> on, on three. three. Or one, two, three, and go. Uh, on three. Three. Okay. On Always got to ask. Okay. One, two, three. Let's throw Roche some money at it. it. What? We're going to have to do that. What? One more time. <laughs> Okay, Robin, elder, elders first. What was your idea? Well, you see, in the video, it didn't seem to want to touch the cables. And the cables are made of some sort of metal. So maybe it doesn't like metal. So I, and she's going to pull out her Altoids, like, tin. <laughs> oh. And she's going to throw it on top of the goo. Oh, take the Altoids out before you throw them. <laughs> Save the Altoids. Um... As you throw the, the Altoid tin on top, let's do another perception. Do you want me to roll it? Yes, please. What is your perception? Plus two. Plus two. It doesn't shirk back. There's no sort of reaction to it. However, as you watch, it does not seem to be um, melting that as, or, you know, eating it as quickly as it's eating the stick. It is corroding the metal, but it's much slower. It's, you know, it's starting to kind of just a thin layer, but the stick is almost gone by now. All right, Piriza, so what, what was your idea? Now, I know we're in an odd place and odd places sometimes cause call for odd solutions. I forgot the whole saying, but you know, you know what I mean right now. Yeah. I'm trying to be I'm trying to be a problem solver, which is something I'm known for at my job, and I realize I feel like I'm failing in this universe. However, what if you're doing great? And Bruza sort of reaches back in her pocket, yeah, and takes out like a half eaten piece of beef jerky. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to try to feed it? Oh, so sure. we're back to thinking it's alive. I, 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 we were attacked by icicles at this point. <laughs> I'm not sure what anything is doing here. Let's give well, it a try. Yeah, like this idea. Why we does gotta... this feel like, like a spirited away where you're feeding the thing and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger? Ooh. Well, when we fed the wolves, they <laughs> went away. So I'll, that's I'll, true. I'll give yeah. you this, Maeve. The stick's almost gone and it does feel like it's bigger. Ooh, yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah maybe, but it's just really little right now. Like, except it's burning things and dissolving things, and I like having things. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> real, real quick, is it doing anything to the snow that it's on? Um, the the snow under it, even with your last perception, everything, it does seem to be melting a little. It, the the you know it, it you know and 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 you know Robin and you remember it's it's a little hot and itchy when it touches you so the snow is seems to be sort of it is affecting the snow in that way. Maybe but it's speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of things liking things speaking of that maybe um, I have this rope over here and I recall mm -hmm. that you have sharp things like kind of all over you. Um, is there any way you can help me like? cut this you know completely contaminated part of the rope off of my cable Absolutely. here okay That's because you know i've already the, lost my as you go and... look at the 10 feet of rope that it, it it's almost gone already this you know again this this black icky, yeah it, it, mucus it, it, substance don't let it spread is, don't let it spread you know it's this 10 foot long skinny little worm that is just i will take my pocket knife and i will go you know 11 feet so that i can safely grab the rope to cut it yeah Thanks all right you got it you I've, cut it I've off already, i've already lost my hat and so i don't know if i could deal with losing a rope at the same time <laughs> yeah, the rope has great sentimental value to you well yeah i mean i use well well never mind that's a story i don't know yeah i don't know if i wonder about that right now 
But so well, as it stands in the snow right now, you have about a foot long stick sized blob uh, with a little tin Altoids can on top of it. You have- <laughs> It's gonna um, be the mintiest blob ever. Oh boy. You have small sort of handkerchief. The handkerchief ones are almost like the size of like a uh, uh, golf ball, like a like little golf ball blob. And then there's about 10 feet of a skinny little worm of this, which now you see is almost beginning to curl in on itself, rolling itself up very slowly to congeal into one shape. I want to, while, while Maeve is doing the cutting and everything, I'm going to continue to watch the the congealed one that's yes. on the stick. I'm the really curious, one. like, is it actually, uh, is it going after the snow the same way it went after the stick and the sock and, you know, kind of climbed on top of it, or just the heat is burning through the snow and it's not interested in snow? It's not a snow cone creature. It's not a snow cone creature. It's, it's not interested in the snow. It doesn't actually even seem, it, it's, it's, yes, it's focusing, it's voracious, voraciously dissolving that stick. Um, it is dissolving the tin you know, the, the Altoid tin, just slower. And the snow seems to be just a byproduct. It's not actively going after the snow. So we are not going into the mine, yes? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, what, how, how are we gonna get the mirror it? shard? I mean, what did I, I we, well, look on the bright side. <laughs> Faruza, I that know. Was a, let's come back when we've leveled up, kind of. <laughs> Faruza, I, I, I feel sorry about your phone, but I, I'm grateful that your phone made a sacrifice so that we now know that this stuff is down there. Now listen, so, all we need to do is make clothes, is... Uh, like armor out of snow, because it's not eating the snow. <laughs> and so we just get like frozen metal armor, it's even melting better. the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, metal, wait, I'm trying to they didn't about... try to burn it yet. I, yeah, I, I, while right, this conversation is happening, I would like to go try and use my, a match and light All it right, on fire. All right, you light a match and drop it on top it's of never the, a good idea, the blob. But... <laughs> um, as you drop Did I ever say it was? <laughs> as you drop it on there, um, it sparks a little bit. And you see this really does react. Um, almost like, uh, you know, like dropping oil in water or, you know, it just sort of, oh. sort of splits apart as this match kind of drops through and then goes out on the snowy ground as almost like it's made a little hole yes. for that, that, uh, that, that what? match. What, what Silas, what? So you look we, at your Eureka. We, we do fire armor. I think. Solved. I don't know how. I'll think about that and see if I can just summon it, but we definitely want to deal with these because what happens what? when they burn through the snow and get to the ground? Oh, it was like in that show where the entire under the ground is just a whole bunch of like oily stuff and it's making demo dogs and, and, and all of that. Demo I don't dogs. think I caught that one, but uh, sure, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to the only uh, the only other question I have before we start burning it with fire, figuring out how to burn it with fire, it was coating the rocks. Do we think it can't eat through rock? Well, what was the passage made of? The so the, the shaft that was in the shaft, uh, as you, you remember, is is metal. It is a thick, thick metal on the sides. Oh, I like, feel for whatever reason I was picturing that I'd gone into the cave. Or the oh, I do too. Yeah, so the, the sorry. So yes, yeah, so to clarify, these shafts are like metal, you know, where the cables go through are these sort of metal uh tubes that have been sort of, you know, dug into the uh the the rock. Okay, so for now, th this stuff is contained except for the part that we have brought out into the world. So well, we, we need don't to burn it that. all up. Possibly. <laughs> Well, oh. what we need is if we're going to go down there is maybe torches or something. Oh, torches make a lot more sense than flaming metal armor. Yeah. <laughs> Silas, I'm going to try. Why not? And I'm going to ball up my fists and think really hard. 
about flaming armor. I'm going to think about that superhero movie yeah. with the guy who can yeah. put himself on yes. fire and it was fine. I'm going Maybe to think that's about... who you are. You don't know. Fire on! And, yeah. and you, I, I'm thinking super hard about all the hot things that I can think of. And one of my fists lights up with fire. <gasps> Just you all look over and you see Neb, eyes closed. She's, you know, you know, straining. And suddenly you, before she even realizes it, her fist <laughs> flames. Fire on oh, the you can Neb takes fire. out her phone and snaps a photo. <laughs> you can bend fire. Neb, you look your down at better. your hand. Neb, what uh, was that? Yeah, well, that yeah, I was hope, I was hoping for the whole. Can, can, can okay. you do like blue fire? Was it? Uh, I don't know if I can change the color can of it. Can you redirect lightning? No, I think that was what Robin was doing. <laughs> I mean, I, I can I can try. And I'll slowly open my hand. Yes. And they'll they'll just be happy little ball of fire. Happy little ball of fire, just hanging oh, out, like you do. Yeah. Does that burn you, Neb? Do you feel that on your hand or anything? It feels warm, but no. Okay, it's this quite... is really this yeah. is this is what? amazing. It's and now, now Neb is can completely you, can distracted you... by the ball yeah. of fire in her hand. Juggle that? Can you <laughs> yeah. throw it? I mean, I'd be careful because of the cyanide, but... Throw it on the, <laughs> on the ooze thing down here. Do you want to try okay. and... Goo. Okay. And I'm going to, like, like a goo. bowling ball, lo think about lobbing it. And, yeah, that it'll Fantastic. come off Give my hand. Fantastic. Give me an attack, please. I need to make an attack with this. You need to oh, make an yeah. attack. Here we go. Silas immediately starts thinking to himself that if Neb can bend fire, that he feels like it, he's got to be able to do something else. And so he just starts like moving around. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh -oh. for, for the next several minutes, he's going to just. Maeve be... turns her camera phone over there. <laughs> Some just... sort of. Uh, uh, made it's up like the Jedi kid, you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. yeah. I rolled a 12. 12? Okay. Yeah. You hit it. Ooh, okay. Only some damage. Uh, it's going to do... Oh! My, my first ball of fire and I rolled max damage. Eight fire damage. Yay! Amazing! Nice. As it hits and poof, this like medium sort of flash of fire, it seems to just engulf this whole area. Um, as you look at it, you do see that it was unable, mostly, although I should double check here, yeah. <laughs> unable to avoid the sort of burst of this. Um, what it actually ended up doing, while you definitely, as you look at it, it seems like about half its mass is gone, but it has spread. Mm. Now there's probably six little ones in okay. sort of a circle around the area where you blasted it. All right. Okay. That's I don't know if that's bag. They yeah, do that in action RPGs all the time, like in video what? games. It's like, what? you know, the one thing dies and it splits into other ones. Well, how much do we need to keep hitting it before it stops splitting? It might it's... not ever stop splitting. What? But at a We could be creating point. millions of these things. I mean, there's already surprise. a lot of it down in the mine, so I think... But it's contained down there. We just brought up this blob, give it life. Well, it's maybe we things. scoop it up into something and then throw it back down the shaft. That's not a bad <laughs> idea. That's not a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. How are your hands, Robin? Oh, I've had worse. It'll be fine. Really? Um, Nave, give me a perception check. Okay. Wait, you've had worse than just like yeah. Wait a second. No, a live tar eating through your hand. Eighteen. I, you 18. know, right? I like, I, go ahead. I'm tough. I can so tough it out. I might be eighty years old, but you know, I'm one of the cool kids. You're the toughest person <laughs> I know, Miss Robin. Coolest by like. far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Maeve, you notice that you've lost track of the long, skinny, warm one. I'm not quite sure where it's gone. And sort of watching the fire in Neb's hand and this ball, this magical ball of fire get blasted. And, you know, now there's six um, little globs that are, you know, 
ping pong ball size, just like the two handkerchiefs. You got eight little ping pong size balls once, but you've lost the 10 foot long worm one that had been coiling. Up. Is there any track in the snow? Give me a, with a survival check, please. Oh my God. Not my strong suit. No, definitely not my strong suit. That is a five. It's windy out here. You know, even the wind causes little tracks. You, it just has disappeared. Uh, everyone. What's that face? What's that face? What's that face a, made? A very, very, s I wouldn't even call it a problem. If you're going to set them free and send them back, uh, no one should mind that one has gone missing. What? What? I think she said one has gone missing and that's very concerning. Well, missing, so it. Which one? The 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 one. Where could it go? Mary or Chuck or. <laughs> name it. Name it. Broke name it after the after the Stooges already. Yeah. It's the Molly curly. and Chef the, the, and Curly. curly. And, it's yeah. it's the, the three squishies. <laughs> so but, there was but, there was two of them, and the one I just hit with fire broke apart into. To six. And now, oh, now no. I'm gonna start keeping an eye. It was, uh, it was six, my there rope. six pieces. There's the two pieces from the handkerchiefs as well. So okay. you have eight small, sort of golf ball, ping pong ball sized, and then this one was ten feet long that had kind of curled in on itself and is now gone. You all said that there weren't any snakes in this environment, and we just went and made one. I told you that we <laughs> oh, were all made magic. a snow snake. Oh, yeah. I Tar snake, even worse. I mean, we better. have to get rid know. of these things quickly. Well, it and have gone very far, could it? They seem to not move particularly well, fast. Out of our sight, that's pretty far. I'm going to stay looking over the eight that we currently have. <laughs> I, I'm just going to keep an eye on these. Okay. So that we don't lose track of one of, one of these. Well, and we have to do something. We don't trouble. have all day. <laughs> Well, <laughs> he's looking for a shovel, or do you have one? No, no, I, I definitely do not have a shovel, but no I shovel? thought that at um, a mine, possibly there could be one. Because you bring it up, uh, you're pretty sure there was a shovel for shoveling ash out of that uh, firebox mm -hmm. back in the longhouse. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, are we going to throw this back down in the metal hole? I think so. I think we have like a moral obligation to. to I mean, we, we, we just created a litter. We, well, Ned, Ned created a litter, but we have yes. given birth to more of these things. We'll scoop it up with extra snow to keep it from, you know, touching anything on its way down. But aren't we just throwing this back down there and then we still have to go down there at some point? Yeah, but then it, it won't be out in the open. Torches. Yes. Well, I no, mean, tor unless... torches are just going to make a million of them, it looks like. Yes. Well, well I'm I, I think I... really hard. Uh, and then there's going to be fire in my hand again. <gasps> I don't know if I'm ever going to get tired of that. That's super fun. And I'm going to look at one of the small ones. Yeah. That's like the Silas furthest away touch. from the other eight. Uh-huh. You, do you want me to go after one of these? Yes. On a yes, I'm going to drop All my right. fire on top of one of the tiny ones. Give me uh, a uh, attack roll, please. Sure. I mean, at some point they become atomic and then we can't see them and what we see, can't see, can't hurt us. That's is that how that true. works? Excellent logic. I got a 14. A 14, you hit. Okay. Please roll me some damage. All right, that's six fire damage. Fire this damage. one is gone. You're pretty sure it like the fire just subsumed it and shriveled it up and ate it up. There's just a little whiff of smoke and the fire and the blob oh. is gone. Okay, well, like you said, Can you do it seven Silas, more times? <laughs> uh, it's molecular now. Do, do you, uh, if you all want to start looking for the snake, I, I'll i try to take care of the other seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a chance to practice this. <laughs> We're going to have to talk about this later because this is extremely... <laughs> extraordinary. I feel like we're right? just brushing it off. However, we do have oh, to I'm... find... Yeah. I am not brushing this off at all. I'm just having so much fun making it happen. And Are you I just will... like pulling that from the sun or like, I mean, like, where, where's it coming from? I'm thinking yeah. really hard about fire armor, but I'm only getting this. 
it's it's like a, a fire fist or something. I don't know. Fire fist. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I'm calling the the cantrip. It's a fire fist. Fire fist. <laughs> all, all right. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna clean up these, and I'll go to the next one, yeah. and I'm gonna. So we'll say. I mean, we'll say we'll give you, you know, ten minutes to sort of, you know, spot nah. them, conjure. Bleh. But you are able with some, you know, pretty intense focus and strong imagination, spot them and sort of burn them up. It might some of them maybe it took two tries, uh, but you're pretty sure as long as you can kind of direct enough damage on it that you will eat it up before it can sort of split and, and by the eighth one i'm uh trying to get it in my left hand and then yeah yeah right yeah hand and then doing both hands and then i'm gonna try a foot but the foot yeah, doesn't put work a, put a then, curve on it yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just i'm just experimenting <laughs> the whole time so yeah that's what i'm gonna be doing yeah well um do you think this is this is something i actually i'll ask Maeve this question do you think that this thing would would want to maybe slide back to its family? Maybe it went back into the. It's possible. I don't. Went back in the hole. I don't know. I've never met these before. <laughs> Where does she want to go home? <laughs> maybe it just seems to have a lot. Don't of I have one of these at home? Thing. No. No, 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 I don't. No. Keep... It's it's from an old, really old movie. It's like stop looking at me, swan. But then it's like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's like tappity tap tap back in the hole. Go back to your home. Don't you go home. <laughs> I have no idea what you both are talking about. Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, yes, let's let's go check. And Robin's we'll gonna check, run back inside. You're gonna go inside yeah. and see if we can find it. Um, yeah. there are no evidence of anything having passed through here inside the long house. Quick, back outside. Yeah. Where I'm on number five. And yeah. And go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna All try right. the left hand now. All right, uh, Robin's gonna start kind of, you know, looking, uh, knowing okay. where it was. Maybe. You can give me a survival or an investigation. I'll do survive. What was my investigation? Yeah, um, may I tell Robin? This is where I had it last, mm. and it was curling yeah. up in this sort of direction. All right. And I, is that so a help? So adding add? your uh, intelligence. So okay, plus one. So plus one, plus five, that is a 24. 24. Um, so Robin, as you start to look where Maeve is like, it was right here um, and kind of dust away some of the snow, you begin to see that there are very small, um, what might be mouse holes or for squirrels or little creatures that live underneath the soil. Um, that the snow sort of covers it over, but just, you know, lightly. And as you dust some away, there are half a dozen of these little holes here, any one of which this long skinny thing could have slipped into. Oh no, the poor chipmunks. All right. Uh, what? Wait, there could be snake holes. This could be good. All right. <laughs> I told you there were snakes. Oh, oh, the blob will eat the snow snakes, and then you'll be good. <laughs> snake versus snake. Uh, well, I'm not sticking my hand in any holes. <laughs> I, I've learned this lesson the hard way. It just, just if it's a snake hole, and I, I don't know. It, it's this is a lost cause. Robin, Maybe we did should you just pour cyanide down there. Robin, did you used to be a snake charmer at some point? Seven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was, an archaeologist. Going off. <laughs> I was an archaeologist once, and I just couldn't handle snakes. Wait, you were an archaeologist? <laughs> yes. Why did it have to be snakes? Why did it have Why? to be snakes? Why? Did you have a hat? Archaeologist or tomb raider, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you always have a hat as an archaeologist. Yeah, I can relate. So that thing escaped into one of those little holes. Is that what you guys were thinking? That's Pretty Robin's much? best guess, yes. It's so gone. I'm sure that won't come back to get us. I mean, wouldn't the easy way to figure it out be to take a rope and stick it into each of the holes? No, I don't want to lose more of my rope. I'm down to 39 feet. What is it about this rope? Do you want to do you want to discuss this no, now no, and just get over with? Absolutely oh. not. Like we are okay. in a life and death situation here, and we don't have time to talk about those shenanigans. 
But what we can say, don't we have cyanide? And haven't we said that it's very dangerous? And like, what if we just poured that down? Like, does it pour? I don't know what. It's, it's a powder, powder. and just a small impact made it begin to explode. It explodes? I thought it was just poison. It, 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 it was. Well, it, it bubbled and made gases. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, it was sparks necessarily, but yes, it 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 reacted strongly to a stone being. What dropped if we on just it. pour a lot of that down the metal pipe? We need gas masks. I'm gonna stand over the Wait, final can't we just one. Put fire down the metal pipe. I'm gonna stand <laughs> over the final one, my hand on fire, yes. about to take care of it, and I go, "Do, do we want to try that before we just start filling holes with cyanide? Because maybe it'll eat the cyanide." Oh, but can we you can imagine try it. Being under the effects of cyanide. No, because I don't know what those effects are, but. Um, Mostly well, death. usually death. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that like works. Maeve said. But I mean, if we want to try it before we fill a bunch of holes with cyanide, yeah. and I pointed Listen, the one I haven't it burned looks like yet. Fire is free now, and so absolutely, fire let's just keep free. keep See if you can do the it. fire. I mean, I haven't been able to not do it yet. In fact, I, I think I'm getting faster at making it happen. It's kind of fun. Only in my hand, though. I don't know why. Only in your hand. Yeah. No, I tried my foot. This is no. No. But yeah, see. Keep trying, Silas. You've got this. But if we so want, we'll... if we want to try the cyanide on one of these before we fill a bunch of holes, I got one more. All right, let's do it. Do it. I'm gonna hold on to my fire and I'm gonna move back a little bit. Uh huh. And. I'm gonna watch this one as I assume someone else is gonna go take uh -huh. care of the cyanide. Robin, Robin will go. Okay, Robin, gonna... going back to the barrels of cyanide salts. <laughs> oh gonna... You had removed one of the lids. Um, okay. On the shelf of equipment, there is a scoop as well as some very <laughs> thick, uh, you know, sort of, you know, heavy, heavy leather gloves. Ooh, grab those no matter what. Yes, grabbing <laughs> those. Uh huh. Um, on top of that, uh, Robin's gonna reach into her bag. Uh -huh. and she's gonna pull out a scarf and she's gonna wrap it around her face and kind of okay. create Smart. a little <laughs> bit of a mask there. And uh, okay. she'll scoop up just the littlest bit because I don't think she needs a lot. All and, right. Uh, she'll walk so it over. You know, Robin <laughs> in her yellow boots, her big, you know, fluffy coat. Her puts the on these, you know, the, the gloves come up to your, you know, your elbows uh, in this thing. And they're, you know, they're three times the size of your <laughs> arms. So you look like a She really does look like an Arctic fisherman. Oh, yeah. yeah. With, a, with yeah. your scarf wrapped around your face. So there's just your eyes underneath your hat with the big daisies on it. <laughs> uh, you pick up this scoop and just go over and just like. 10 grains of cyanide <laughs> salt on the tip of this uh, scoop come out into the snow and tip it, pouring it over the top of this uh, little blob that, uh, yes, Neb is standing ready. Um, as you do, and it falls upon there, you don't see any particular reaction other than it slowly is absorbed by this creature, creature does it by get, this blob. Does it get bigger? Does it do anything? It does. I mean, I mean, just I mean, you put ten grains. You know, it, like it does its little bubble expand thing and just sort of absorbs those cyanide salts. Hmm. Okay. Um, I will say a little bit of gasish sort Ooh. of comes out. You can smell just a little tinge of like, like when tires, you know, skid. And there's that little kind of rubber burn mm. smell. Burn, burn chemical smell. A little bit of that in the air when that happens. So fire. So fire. So fire. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it looks like it didn't hurt it. And then that means that it just absorbed it. And so if this stuff tries to suck us in at some point, then we're also going to have to deal with cyanide. Hmm. Basically. OK. Sort of. Maybe. Fire well, is now, free. Again, fire, so yeah. fire. OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Might I suggest, since it now has explosive cyanide in it, we all step 
way back and, and cover your face with your like Robin sort of. I'm gonna ish. I'm gonna move thirty feet back, as in my experimenting uh -huh. with all of the uh -huh. little ones. I've figured mm -hmm. out that thirty feet is about as far as I can throw this. All right. So I'm nice experimenting, Neb. Th yeah. Thank you for giving me a whole bunch of targets. So, <laughs> so yeah, she's gonna get thirty right. feet away from this and wait for everybody to be. You you pace back more. like a like a kid with a pirate map, uh, you know, counting <laughs> your paces to thirty feet, uh, and aim. Give me your attack for this last one. We'll we'll play this last one out since you made it. Special. Aim. It's your aim. Nineteen. Ooh, Nineteen. You hit right on top. Give me some damage. Okay. Five fire damage. Woo! Uh, it lands on it pfft, a much larger uh, little burst. Um, and again, in that area, the, the actual blob particles seem to have been burnt up, but there's this faint sort of yellow gaseous cloud that just slowly starts to dissipate into Ooh. the air. Okay. A little bit of good, a little bit of bad. I'm glad you that we're very far all away. all that cyanide down the middle pipe, then you let a, a flame go, and it will blow that whole thing up down there. And then we won't be able to breathe. How are we supposed to work between that? Or, 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 use, or use the cable. <laughs> what are we doing with like, the cable? I, 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 I actually like, don't understand. Like, so so the, uh, you have this book on engineering and things like that, so I can help you out a little bit. You're pretty sure this is a counterweight system. Mm -hmm. So whatever is down at the bottom of this other shaft is probably the same weight as the lift, potentially with stuff on it, right? Because this is yes. made for bringing up rock. It's made for hauling people, right? So the steam engine is going to be able to, you know, counterbalance these. So essentially, when the lift goes down, whatever is counterbalancing it in that other shaft is going to come up and vice versa. So this is just balancing out the lift so that the lift will function. But but all all that is doing, j just to try yes, to clarify, of course. all that is doing is we are assuming that, that, that there is some uh, impassable part in the mm -hmm. mine probably somewhere that either needs goods raised to, to a point that they can be used or people raised. Mm -hmm. And so the steam engine is not necessarily doing anything in the place where we just sent the phone down yes. it is moving a lift in it's another moving part the of the cave. lift in another okay. part of the cave mm -hmm. to provide access and transportation for miners and their goods and so, th and so we, then that's just going back looking... through the front door though hmm. what you well, saw the, the, was the front the door we damage. saw that we saw the the that the the lift was yes. there we yeah. have to get this operational to even get into the yep. from the front door now into the mines. what is holding it in place right now is this machine and its counterbalance potentially i'll just offer if it didn't have counterbalance maybe it's not there so there's your sort of sort of your two options appear to be either activating this thing so that you can use it and come up and down based on uh you know the the use of the lift or disabling it we were told that when we got to the mine or that mm -hmm. we were going to be spelunking that's why yep. we have all the the ropes and everything yep. so yeah. it's possible we can get where we need to go without the lift it's just going to be harder if we are worried about moving around some of this ooze um before we make that decision though there's still a snake ooze around here somewhere that we should probably find. Yeah, Again, we could just cool. take a stick and we could we could do that. I'll start looking around for sticks. Or we could, <laughs> you know, find a way to barricade that shut. That would we take don't know a while. Went down in those little holes. Through. It could have been chipmunks, like Miss Robin said. Oh, oh we'd be chipmunk. blowing up chipmunks. Oh, it's true. <laughs> well, if, if if it's down there, then I think the chipmunks have bigger problems. Robin, give me a nature check, please. Aren't chipmunks up in trees? I don't know. Ten. I don't Ten. know where they live when the winter um, happens. You know, yeah, I mean, chipmunks, squirrels, snakes, 
you know, um, all gophers, all kinds of different, you know, I burrow down and create things there. The other thing you know is like rabbits, mm -hmm. these are long, they've got many different entrances and exits. They're long and wide, you know, it would be very difficult to really pinpoint <laughs> mm. what this so it, it could be is. gone it, it could it's be a lost it cause be, yeah. i say we focus on what we need to do here and keep moving forward okay all right do we need to cover the hole so that nothing can come back out and it's a pointless. I think that's kind of pointless as it seems Fair to be enough. able to eat through anything. So This is true. Well, onward. Yeah. Mm. Onward and then if there enough. is a chipmunk down there, I'll feel really bad. It was trying to so get are we, are we babies. Me too. Activating this thing or do you want to just go? Robin? Ah. <laughs> I, I don't mind using the climbing gear. But... It's, if we get it operational, which we could, I mean, who's to say that it'll stay operational if we have to keep the fire going and there's no one here to watch it unless one of us stays behind. Not it. That's true. And no, I don't think anyone <laughs> should stay behind. I, didn't we, Maeve said this is horror movie rules. You don't split up. Well, mm -hmm. we just hope everyone else has been going to the gym because of... <laughs> <laughs> I certainly have made it kind of scrawny. Well, I, uh, it's so okay. It's not... I'm sure that I am positive that Miss Robin was a climbing instructor at some point. Well, I was the history. I was the leader of my local climbing grotto back in the day, and yes, don't worry because rappelling down is easy, and getting up if we have froggers then we should just be able to whoop, 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 right back up. It's no problem at all. No problem at all. Yeah. Fro Frogger is like the, the game. You on that. Frogger uh, like the game? They're like little things you put in the rope and you you, climb, you step on one and it brings up the other and you step on one and it brings up the other. It's, it's a climbing yeah. thing. Yeah, and I mean, to be honest with you, Silas, I think I wouldn't mind trying out some of this. And she sort of looks over at Neb newfound strength. I'm not willing to give it superpower energy yet, but I will say it's definitely interesting and I wouldn't mind using it for nah, you, good you rather than evil. Powers. Um, yeah, you have superpowers. So Maeve, just kind of hearing this discussion, walks yeah. over and starts cutting the rope the, the cable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, 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 the metal <laughs> cable? <laughs> well, that's what we need to do, right? <laughs> we so need you're going to crash We, we have to break lift. it, yeah? That's uh, do um, I Do don't it. actually know, but I am am a fan of the chaos, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm here to provide. Therefore, shrink. So, um, oh. do you have like a metal file? Like, what do you have? I have, what, yeah, what I have my, your... my pocket knife. I your have. Pocket? Okay, great. Um, yeah. I have the letter opener. I have a, a bunch so of. So you just have uh, some different sharp, stuff. That... Sharp implements. Sharp All implements. kinds of sharp things, like Silas said. Tons yeah. If things. it, if Go I can ahead. help, I'll come over and I'll set the part of the cable I'll, I'll use my fire yeah. to warm it up so it's oh it's a God. softer place <laughs> that she can she can cut through so you produce this fire and hold it underneath so that the fibers of the cable the metal you know fibers start to glow as she's you know moving her pocket knife and uh, uh letter opener across it and it slowly begins to sort of bend and every once in a while <laughs> You know, a couple of the fibers and strings begin to kind of pop sliding up. It starts to get, you know, thinner and thinner, half of it breaking away. You hear a large <laughs> as the sort of uh, weight of each side begins to pull it apart before there's just one last string left. And <gasps> in an instant, faster than you could ever catch it with a naked eye, the cables are gone. You wait. Silence. Silence. A huge crash. Um, it takes another couple of seconds, 20, 30 seconds before dust cloud begins to sort of pour up of both sides of these metal shafts uh, into the air around you. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we just did that. It's done. I'm just waiting we for the can't aftermath. Undo it. Maybe right? that was really cool. Oh, thanks. 
Does this mean we're going into the mine? Well, Unless you have anything mine. else planned. <laughs> Steve's I, I mine. I was Steve's all... mine. Steve's mine. The mine of Steve. Steve. Crafted by Steve, perhaps. Crafted by Steve, perhaps. <laughs> Unless we think that the shard of the mirror is somewhere else. I mean, for whatever well, reason. I mean, I certainly hope it wasn't underneath whatever I just sent <laughs> crashing down. Then we'll have many shards. <laughs> I mean, Thankfully, we, are we have the taste. That getting the shards is the only way to get back home. I'm not exactly sure how we made that leap, but I'm, I'm definitely here we... for it. Um, and so we've got to get these shards. And yes. for some other reason, we think that the shards in the mine. Um, well, so the, just to review, the reasoning yes. is we were told we had to get the shards of the mirror, or we had to reassemble the mirror, yes. um, and there is a map that is in the backing that aligns with the map that we had of the locations, mm -hmm. and, and each one corresponded to a shard. And I'll pull out my phone because I took a picture of that yes. ghost map yes. and show that mm -hmm. and say, what well, we don't know exactly, and we're making an assumption because we're the all the dots were the mine the all the places we were supposed to stop mm -hmm. and i think the leap of logic of that's how we get home was video game logic but we don't know all, <laughs> all we know is that i uh ivy said that putting the shards back in the mirror was going to help free her yes. her yeah which i would like to do so i'm gonna go in the mine i didn't bring it up uh, for anyone to doubt our purpose, I brought it up uh, just simply to say uh, that uh, to reiterate our purpose and that we need to go into the mine here because that's why we think that uh, that's where we think the mirror is, right? And so yeah. now we have probably put uh, you know thousands of pounds of something on top of the mirror. Um, and it might not be a shard anymore. It might well, be it's not likely that the mirror was right where the entrance was, we right don't underneath. Yeah. I'm guessing, but you never know. And I should have thought of that before. But <laughs> no, no. And live in here, I suppose. <laughs> here um, we are. Yeah. A couple I, I, of quick thoughts. One, we have a, a few different reasons now to carry some fire with us, perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. I set my we, hand on fire we, again. I'm like. <laughs> Well, done now we have there. it um i but... can literally carry fire this is the best you should all try <laughs> it have, have you have you tried I, thinking about fire i've been I thinking once stuck I, my I don't hand like in the fire stove and that was my, all I my test said it was air uh and not fire so i've been like trying <laughs> but, okay. but, but nothing yet but i do know how to prime a torch because that is a skill that we had to pick up in order to join the live action role play group in the guild that i was in <laughs> And so, um, you know, May you know files it, away the oh silence of LARPer for later. <laughs> you, you've heard of LARPing, right? Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch um, of people who do that in in Central Park, like every yeah. weekend. They kind of look kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> um, we get that all the time. How cool we are. Uh -huh. um, and so, uh, but but yeah, like one of the uh, you know stipulations for joining the guild is you, okay. you've got to you know learn how to do an actual torch now you know starting the fire is a lot harder but but getting the torch right where it can hold the fire for a little bit longer i picked that up on the internet well i have good news starting the fire is not going to be hard anymore <laughs> so okay. between you and me we've got all of the torches taken care of i guess maybe and we also have it? torches Did you have a thought flashlight Marissa? You were holding up your hand earlier. <laughs> Just making sure we didn't jump you. No. Okay. Good. It's Bruiser processing this, gotcha. this <laughs> chaos, as Silas says. He's, okay, he's, he's hanging out with his friends, lighting torches. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This That's the weirdest thing that's happened today. <laughs> All right, then. It's settled. We get out of here. We go back to our gear. We make torches and we go right into the front door and rappel down the shaft. Yes? Yes. Yes. All right. What time, of, what time of day is it at this point? Your guess is probably mid afternoon. Um, it was probably around midday by the time you got up to the uh, long house in the first place. Um, now, uh, yeah, early, early mid afternoon. So okay. I think. Uh, Miss Robin, I think that is an amazing idea. Maybe mm -hmm. when we get back, we take the time to do the torches and prepare and then 
sleep once before we go into the yeah. mine? Yeah, remembering that I'm the days that. here are short. That mm -hmm. uh, you know, night is probably even though it's still early in the earlier in the day, night is probably not too far away. But I also, night doesn't right really now. matter in a cave, right? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, but for some reason, I don't. I would rather not sleep in the mine if we can. Oh Maybe. no, no, no! Yeah, that's just a recipe for more disasters in general. More <laughs> sludge monsters coming to snuggle up with I'm us while we sleep. I'm pretty sure disasters coming for. I mean, let's be honest, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's fine. We can try to look at the opportunity to the group. But, but they may up. actually be repelled by your pants. I didn't think of that. Oh, that is true. what you don't like? burn. And then I bust out and leave just a little bit of a... <laughs> Are we inspired with that by now? <laughs> <laughs> sure, Perusa, you want an inspiration point? You got it. Yes, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so like, hey, flash pants. Point. You get a burn point. Nice. <laughs> wow. We'll call inspiration points a, a good good burn point. Uh, all right. So it sounds like having destroyed the lift system, you are letting go any hope of tracking down the uh, blob snake uh, wherever it went and heading back down towards your gear camp. Mm -hmm. And you just to be clear, there's yeah. no other path leading somewhere else from here. This was the end of this This path? was all that you could see. The path sort of went up yeah. past this cyanide field, um, as well as the longhouse sort of up and, you know, around the corner of the mountain. Um, I mean, there are places you could continue to walk, but this mountain is bald. There's very little trees up here, and it just looks like open glacier open snow sort of side mm -hmm. of a mountain um okay. yeah it doesn't have a, a a distinct path to you in the same way okay so miss robin do you know anything about handling cyanide because frankly it could come in handy for things down the line you know say what? clearing those boulders that um, are in the way or, i uh, don't know Robert, setting up a perimeter Everything I know was just from one of my favorite customers, Robert, back at the diner. He used to talk day and night about mining and all of his things. I'm I'm lucky I picked up what I did from his chattering. <laughs> You're lucky too. Drag. <laughs> He's very, he was a wonderful man, but I, I'm afraid I'm a little out of my depth on this one. Yeah. I mean, unless the cyanide here is different from the cyanide that we are used to back in our world, we probably should be very careful even being around it. Unless it's different. Unless this is a fancy... Mm, why do you keep calling it not our world? I How love we know? that. I love that this, we've this is our, there. This I, is our world, and, and we just don't know what happened to everyone else on the train. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I think this is... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, considering I mean, I what just know. happened. I mean, I mean there's quite a bit that we don't life. know about in our world. So we know okay. only a fraction of the animals on the planet. I, I lift and up my hand and I there set it on fire again. <laughs> <laughs> Neb barked like a dog. Well, there's that. Apparently. <laughs> I, I, I'm not really 100% sold that we are still where we came from. But then again, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to venture that maybe we are and the whole world has just changed on a dime for all of us. Well, what this world is, we're still figuring out. But Maeve, I think you had a good idea of maybe some of this can be used to clear those rocks. But I think that's a thing we come back for to grab before we leave. I don't think we take it now. Are we sure we're not going to blow up the whole mine? Uh, that someone I'm, else won't. I don't know. We've but... been here for several days and we haven't found another person, like actual human person. Uh, there were like wolves that we talked to for, yeah, and right. talked to for a while. But, so, I mean, we you might be right. We might not be in another world, but we're in our world and all the other people have disappeared. And so we might not ever talk to another person except for the six of us or five. Or how many of us? Oh, we really are in hell, aren't we? <laughs> 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 the six of a seven, not five that you're not all lovely, but 
Yeah, Maeve, I can't help but feel a little disappointed that you would say that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm having... No. I like all of you. I know we've only just met, but... I'm just thinking we could never go back to any of the things with, that we came from. I can't think about that right now. It actually fills me with a lot of... Yeah, you know, I don't know. I was up for a change, so... You're on the hunt for some mirror shards. Maybe that'll do it. I would yeah. be okay with not going back, but I would feel bad if nobody had the the choice. Does that make sense? Does that make... Is that bad that I feel that way? No, I actually agree with you because I don't know about the rest of you, but I do feel like I have a lot to go back to. I mean, I have, I have a wonderful family that I love very much, but this is amazing. And I... I'm having way too much fun finding out all <laughs> about this this world or whatever is happening and the things that we can do and I just want to find out more. And so I'd like to be able to tell my family that I'm okay, but but no, if I have the choice, I'm staying here wherever this is. You sort but of I would want that scar on your forehead and the little bit of missing skin from your fingers and how this adventure so far has literally changed the scape <laughs> of your body in some ways. Yeah. I've I've got some scars on the yeah. side. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> but all all Neb can think about is talking to the wolves and yeah. summoning fire and the cool <laughs> things that, like she's looking at all of you and in her mind she's seeing you know, Robin doing awesome things with lightning and moving super fast and uh, <laughs> Silas healing people and all of that. So she's, yeah. but she does say, I, I would I would like everybody to have that choice. So I feel bad if you wanted to go back and you couldn't. So this is the only lead we have for, for us to help Ivy and for maybe all of you who want to go back to be able to, right? That's the only, it's literally the only lead we have. Otherwise, we just want go back to the train and sit in there and hope someone finds us. Oh, we have Some, more of the train someone, to look something. through as well. Yeah. But I say we're here, we should do this first. Yeah. But also, I, agree. I think in this case, if we're going to perhaps need this cyanide, uh, a bird in hand, do we have it any... seems uh, prudent to... There's a lot of it, though, right? Yeah, it got like barrels. two big barrels of it. it do we and have whatever's any... out on the field. <laughs> I'm not going to so walk over that it's, field. It's stored in wooden barrels. Wooden barrels. So... So Ms. far, Robin, you have any... only seen... Um, I, I can offer from, from Robin's you know, knowledge and from what you've seen... <laughs> It eats rock. That's what it does. It eats okay. rock. Now, when it eats rock, it does release gases, fumes. which you have noticed fumes that are not particularly pleasant. Or um, when it's set on fire. Or when it's right. Or when it's set on fire. Yes, it also. When it's set on fire, it also releases some fumes. Um, but yeah, so it, so, it, so it's for like outdoor it's use only. Yes, <laughs> kind of a kind of an idea. <laughs> hmm. Uh, what about glass? Is that counting as, as rock or is that counting as... Uh, you you could certainly put some glass around there and see how it reacts if you'd like to. I'm trying to think what I have with me that I am happy to empty. <laughs> Sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything. I don't have a, um... a container, I don't think, that isn't... That would there work. are a bunch of containers on that supply shelf that you saw. Um, I'll offer this, what are they one made of, of them are glass. Oh, okay. There are metal containers. Um, okay. Uh, you know, some sort of uh, wooden containers, um, buckets, things like that. Uh, plastic. Mm -hmm. Maeve, do you want to take a look and see what looks like the most secure? Sure. Yeah, give me I'll an give investigation. It a look. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll help you. So that's okay, a plus okay. five. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, as you look at it, there is a plastic bucket 
uh, bin that has like a snap on lid. It's okay. not the sturdiest, like the lid doesn't have like locks on it or anything, you know, like uh, catches on it, but it's just like a storage container. It feels like that would kind of keep it in there. Okay. And it's not, not huge. You could probably, you know, it's maybe like six inches by six like inches by six inches. Tub? Yeah, exactly. That okay. kind of a size. We, we okay. wouldn't want to be carrying around more than that probably anyway, no. right? Yeah. No. No. All right. So uh, <laughs> Robin's got the big leather gloves and the, uh, the uh, scoop. Yeah. All right. I will have to fill this. it up. Yep. Just a little. All right. Cover your face. Cover your face again. Oh, it's covered. <laughs> Just in case. Cover your face. Scooping <laughs> cyanide salt crystals out of the uh, wooden barrels into this small plastic container, which you just uh, place it on. You burp the Tupperware edge a little bit and seal it down. All right. Who's responsible for carrying this? Me? <laughs> Not Anybody? It. Not it. I, 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 I'll do it. Volunteered. Touch I'll your nose. It. Yep. We just Put need it. to get it back to the campsite for now. All right, yes. then I've got it. All right, Robin carrying it, you know, arms outstretched in front of her and her giant leather gloves, uh, wearing her scarf across her face, leads the march in her yellow boots down back to your <laughs> as As that starts to happen and she's holding it like that, yes. you've been noticing that um, Silas is continuing to Bit, try to bend the very air around him uh -huh. and, um, at, at some point there um a, as she's walking um he he's like wait a minute what did, did did you see that did you see that what what I, I no no like i'm i moved it did you feel that miss robin what the wind uh yeah yeah but that, but that was me. It wasn't the wind. It wasn't the actual wind. It was like wind, wind for me. Oh, but very, know... very good, Silas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you, no, no. Seriously, got... seriously. And at you're this just farting. Yeah. No, you? no. I, I swear, I swear, I swear. I did it. I did it. And I'm like concentrating really hard, and I'm like putting my hand out. And as you see this, um, something tries to take the jar out of your hand, Miss Robin. Ah. You feel the weight sort of release out of your hands as it lifts about an inch in the air above your fingers. Oh, oh I, I no 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 that's me that's me that's me I promise. What? I promise. Yeah, that's, yeah no like, like are you really. Serious? What, what, that's this? amazing. Watch so you this. pull your hands away, Robin. It stays floating in front of your face. What? What's this? Like me drop? But I, I, okay. No, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna carry it. I'm gonna carry it. Okay. I've got this. I've got this. It's fine. <laughs> And okay. I'm going to start walking mean? forward. Uh huh. And moving Just, it forward. Uh, maybe this is not the thing to, to use. The <laughs> first thing. <laughs> the <jar of> cyanide. <laughs> perhaps a <laughs> name, perhaps it. And it's like, okay. Well, let's try this with something a little less it's explosive. It's much safer, though. Like, what if you drop it? Then you're going to die. At least I have some experience with my hands. Maeve makes a good point. Silas, do you want to try it with like, um, with my bag what? and I'll just hand over my bag. Once yeah, you're certain really that this is something you can do. I looked and felt pretty certain right there because, uh, and at this point in time, uh, what, what do you have on you, Maeve, that is um, um, at, uh, exposed on your, um, your, your clothing or whatever? Does she have a hat on? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> he lifts it out of her pocket. He does not know about the hat. No, just I know. Reminder, know he does not know <laughs> yes. about the hat. Do you um, have a hat? Not the hat. Just, just a. a are you just? Yeah, it's a cold. Hat. I'm wearing a winter hat. Then, I have then a winter I... hat on. I'm wearing a, a, a like um almost like a festival belt. Um, uh -huh. I'm going to telekinetically take the hat backpack. off. Backpack. Right? The hat begins to rise up above your head, Maeve. I've got this. I it's can control the very winds. And my what? hair is just giving me trouble lately. It's just I don't have one. What's wrong? And you do note that Maeve, Maeve usually is wearing her hair in, in some some fairly, <laughs> I mean, neat-ish braids. Clearly there are some, like, you know, cowlicks <laughs> and things. It, it is yeah. a little bit disheveled compared mm -hmm. to what it was when we boarded. If they, maybe maybe uh, maybe Robin has a comb in her bag. We can work with what we got. Oh, believe me, I've I've tried combing oh. it. It's I've lived with this my whole life, but it's uh, 
All right, very well. Let me have my hat back, please. I, uh, that that's fine, and I I, I put it back on, on her head, and mm -hmm. I'm just like, look, uh, I'm just saying that I have a way to carry that incredibly safely, and if you don't want to take me up on it, I hope no one dies. Of an silence. ability you've had for less than five minutes. Well, that doesn't make me any more proficient or less proficient in it. Like Robin, I, do you know how long it lasts? Do you I know have, how long you can sustain it? Do you know how much you can carry? Do you know when you get tired? I can carry that jar because I just did it. But moving while you're walking, you sure. Can... And I, I am going to uh, freeze. I hold it out, and I'm just gonna walk at a massive distance from everybody because <laughs> I do not want to be near that bucket if if he All cannot right. sustain his mental energy on it. Maeve, let's okay. go. Runs like. 50 feet away <laughs> as <laughs> Silas uses his mind wind power to about 30 feet in front of him, kind of okay. 15 feet in front of you. No, I, I'm, I'm actually pushing it and I'm mm -hmm. trying to see like how far away I can push it. Okay. And I get it about 50 feet away from me. 50, and five so, zero. Yes. Woo! And it's just going to go about 50 feet and and it's just you know in, in, invisibly all right walk, walking down through the path and um and you also notice that silas isn't concentrating too much on this that it's uh he's, he's, st happen. he's still talking to everyone and occasionally he kind of like spins his finger in the air um and uh, and and other than that he's like he's like talking the entire time so listen i knew that you were making fire and I knew that that meant that some of the rest of us had to be able to do other things like that. And so this, this is like, it, it, it's honestly, it's like telekinesis. It's like I'm moving it with my mind and I moved the hat too. Did you see me move the hat? And I think, <laughs> yes, but I haven't, but Silas, let's stay away from removing clothing in the future. Yeah. Well, well like I, I mean, a hat's <laughs> not really clothing, is it? Like <laughs> for Rosa, give me a quick perception check. Oh, good one. 21. Being so attuned to the winter and cold, having lived in, you know, Vermont and all of this, you notice that it's, ooh, it's starting to get cold. The temperature has dropped significantly in the last just five minutes as you've been walking down the side of the mountain. As you look around, you can see that the sun is beginning, you know, it, it barely crests over the horizon. So you don't really see it for very long. It's very, very low, but now it's beginning to just be covered at the bottom by the, the edge of the mountains. Um, and it's starting to get a little darker and quite a bit colder. It's gonna be a cold night, y'all. Do you feel that? It goes right to your bones and I'm one who is comfortable in this kind of weather, but even to me, it's a little weird. Neb's gonna concentrate for a second. She's always kind of known what the weather is gonna be in the next 24 yeah. hours just by feeling mm -hmm. her yeah. time. It's kind of yeah. a weird thing. Well, what's the weather gonna be like for the next 24 <laughs> hours? Oh you my God. <laughs> get the feeling that the way the wind has picked up, the air that's normally quite dry has a little bit of a sort of, not humidity, but there's a little, taste in the air you think there might be a storm <gasps> Frozo, you're absolutely right there's a storm coming i don't know you feel I, something oh yeah i mean I, i've always kind of known what the weather is going to be you, what, know, you have you like kinda, a weather knee yeah yeah and a hip mm -hmm. and it doesn't hurt but i just kind of think about it and it you know you haven't had that kind of thing no i, I do to, actually uh, oh you do, Silas? No, no, I'm saying I have telekinesis. I don't think we can all have everything. <laughs> I mean, your telekinesis is very cool. It so is. I mean, that's fire. Wind. You carry things to your Someone mind. Someone has water? Someone has heart? <laughs> Who gets the dud of heart? Oh. Yeah. Are we summoning Captain Planet? That might be Miss Robin. I mean, oh. I'd be okay with summoning Captain Planet. But yeah, I, Feroz is right. There's... Can I tell how far away the storm is? Yeah, I mean, is? as as they begin to point this out, you all can feel there's a different quality to the wind. 
the wind before has sort of made sense. It follows the contours of the mountain. And when you get in an open area, it really, but this starts to feel like it's, it's almost sort of swirling around a little bit. Um, and as you look at the sky, it is dark. Um, Are we better off going back to the train? No, that's a long way us, away. Yes. How, it's wait, how far? Quite a few yeah, hours. It's a number of we hours. We could shelter. We could stop here. We have a cave. We need we have shelter. People have slept we have the in long caves house. for centuries. What about the long, the long house? house with the cyanide and the blob monsters? Well, or we can the get ice the cyanide out of there. Me. She's mine. A, well, B, C, or D. I, I think, <laughs> or none of the above. Well, now, now that I can sling fire, let's clear out the the front of the cave, the front of the mine, mm -hmm. and maybe we can just camp like just inside of the cave just so that we're out of the storm and then tomorrow we can go spelunking. <laughs> All right, let's do it. As let's you come do back it. down towards your camp and kind of see the remains, now you can really feel it bite. Snow is beginning to fall in quite thick, heavy flakes. It begins to go kind of almost sideways. You feel it sort of pelting you on the side as you begin to grab your gear. Uh, this thick, heavy, wet snow that's pelting across the side. Uh, hair is immediately sort of drenched and frozen at the same time. Um, your clothing as well gets heavier as it's harder to see. You start to pull yourself through the snow, getting your gear into the open mouth of the cave as quickly as you can. As you step inside that space with the last sort of little bit of waning light, the snow slicing sideways through the air outside the mouth, you can see the pit of the shaft. The lift is gone. Um, as you, I don't know if one of you wants to get close enough or not, but you can see that there oh, is uh, a yeah, sure. giant I've... hole at the back of this cave. Ned? Yeah, I've I've got my hand on fire. And Your I'm hand gonna... on fire. You because I'm it looking out. for more yes. of those ice creatures. I'm gonna go peek down too this time. As Maeve and Neb walk towards the edge, and Neb, you hold your, your flame hand over the edge and peer down. You can see this shaft goes down quite a ways. Um, there isn't enough light peering in yet for you to see the bottom, but you can see that it, you know there's a little bit of rock and then an open space and more rock and into the earth, nice and dark. And with that, Just we dark. will stop here. And pick oh up my God, next my heart time. is like pounding. <laughs> With the next chapter of Children of Erte, thank you all for playing. Thank you for watching. And please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night, everyone. <laughs>